welcome you all in this NPTEL online certificate course on mechatronics. Today we are going to talk about program logic controllers or PLCs. Okay. Uh, see program logic controllers are used in uh, many of the industrial automation processes. Program logic controller is a digital electronic device that uses a programmable memory to store instruction and to implement functions such as logic, sequencing, timing, counting and arithmetic in order to control machines and processes. They are much faster than relay operated systems. The result is a flexible system which can be used to control system which vary quite widely in their nature and complexity. PLCs have great advantage that it is possible to modify a control system without having to rewire the connections to the input and output devices. This is the architecture of uh, a P, uh, PLC. Uh, so, basically uh, you have uh, the uh, input channel and you have the output channel. Okay. So, uh, then you have a uh, input output uh, bus system okay. uh, and uh, there are uh, program panels, okay. uh, there is a power supply, the, there is a RAM, uh, CPU, clock system ROM, data RAM and the input output unit and you have the address bus as well as the control bus and the data bus. So, uh, this is how it is. So, the if we look at the basic components, okay. so uh, the typically a PLC has uh, 5 basic components. Uh, first is the processor unit or what we call it as uh, CPU. Then uh, there is a power supply unit, uh, programming device, memory unit and input and output sections. Uh, basic components of PLCs, so uh, as I said uh, main power we have, uh, 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 the PLC has power supply, input interface, output interface, processor is there, program and data memory is there, then communication interface is there. Okay. Uh, so, uh, in, uh, in, uh, input interface receives uh, input uh, from input devices such as temperature or pressure signals. Okay. Program and data memory uh, uh, receives instructions that is programming device to enter the programs. Communication interface to receive and transmit data from or other PLC and output interface you have the the output design, uh, devices such as walls or motors. Now, let us look at how do we program a PLC. Okay. So, a PLC can be programmed by 5 different ways, ladder diagram, instruction list, sequential flow chart, structure text and functional block diagrams. Out of these, the ladder diagram is mostly adopted because it makes easier for engineers with no great knowledge of programming to write the programs for PLCs. So, we will be seeing some of the examples of programming through the ladder diagram. So, a convention uh, in drawing a ladder diagram. So, before uh, we proceed further, let us see what are the conventions. Okay. So, the vertical lines of the diagram represent the power rails between which the circuits are connected actually. Each rung on the ladder defines one operation in the control process. The ladder diagram is read from left to right and from top to bottom. So, this is how it is done and this procedure is going to all the rungs uh, of the program is termed as a cycle. So, uh, here each rung uh, must start with an input or inputs and must end with at least one output. Input devices being represented by two short parallel lines as you can see over here. Uh, 
uh, to represent switching contact and the output devices being represented by say a circle as you can uh, see over here. So, here we have the two input devices say input A and input B and here you have the output device and say uh, 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 the uh, example could be that uh, say you have the power rails over here, you have a switch A uh, corresponding to input device A and you have switch B corresponding to input device B and the output could be say activation of a solenoid. Okay? So, this is how it is. The term is uh, the term input is used for a control action such as closing the contact of a switch used as an input to the PLC. The term output used for device connected to the output of a PLC for example, a motor. Electrical devices are shown in their normal condition. Thus, a switch which is normally open until some object closes it is shown as open uh, on a ladder diagram. A switch that is normally closed is shown as closed. A particular device can appear in more than one rung of a ladder. For example, we might have a relay which switches on one or more devices. The same relay and or numbers are used to label the device in each uh, situation. The input and output are all identified by their addresses. The notation used depend on the PLC manufacturer. This is the address of the input or output in the memory of the PLC. For example, say uh, Mitsubishi uh, uh, PLCs precede input element by an X and output element by uh, a Y. Okay. And thus, we have numbers such as say x400 and x401 for inputs and y430 and y431 for output. Okay. So, here they proceeds uh, uh, with x for the input and proceeds with y for the output. These are the ladder symbols, uh, symbols which are uh, used. Say uh, this is uh, input as context. Uh, as contacts not closed until uh, input is um, uh, available okay. and uh, this is uh, input as contact which are closed uh, um, uh, until uh, uh, input is available and this is for the output and these are for the uh, any special instruction if you have. Okay. So, uh, uh, here, uh, uh, if uh, this is the diagram um, like this, uh, uh, then what does this means? This basically means that the output A occur when input A occur. This is uh, uh, what is mean by it. So, you have input 1 and you have output A. Okay. Now, uh, this one, uh, the second one output B, uh, B occur when input 1 and input 3 occurs. Okay. So, if uh, input 1 and input 3 both are there, then only uh, the output v will be occurring. And here output C occur when input 4 or input 5 occurs. Okay. So, here these are in parallel. So, if either one either input 4 or input 5 occur then only um, input uh, output C will occur and here uh, we have the and one. Okay. And then uh, you, you can uh, have uh, uh, um, uh, a, a box you can write end and this basically indicates the end of the program. So, this is how using ladder symbol a PLC can be programmed. Now, let us look at the various logic functions which could be achieved using PLCs. Okay. So, the logic function can be obtained by combination of switches and the following shows how we can write ladder program for such combination. Okay. So, suppose you have a uh, 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 say switch A and switch B okay, and the, there is a solenoid uh, connected over here. Okay. So, uh, this is basically uh, and, and you see, uh, see when switch A will be on um, and switch A is uh, 
uh, is um, in open position. So, you have input 1 uh, being shown here, input 2 uh, being shown here. This is corresponding to this one and this one is corresponding to uh, this one. Now, uh, uh, this solenoid will be on only when switch A and switch B both are on. Okay? So, if you have input here and input here, then you, you are going to have the output and this type of logic is what is called as the AND logic. Okay? Uh, we, we have just seen in the previous slide. Similarly, uh, I can define the OR logic okay? and here in case of OR switch A and switch B, they are in parallel. Okay? So, we have the input A1 and input 2, uh, they are in uh, parallel basically okay? and you have the output. So, in this case, you have the output if either of the input is available and this is what we call it as the OR uh, logic. Uh, uh, we can also uh, see the other logics okay, such as uh, uh, NOR logic which is R inverted okay, and that we can get uh, with this type of combination. Okay. Uh, I am not explaining uh, here uh, the truth table corresponding to this bec uh, because we have already seen the truth table uh, uh, in the uh, digital logic uh, uh, lecture. Okay? So, uh, if you want to see it uh, corresponding to each gate what the truth table is going to be, uh, uh, please uh, refer uh, my lecture on the digital logic. Okay? Uh, so, here for the NOR, uh, uh, this is the switch A uh, and this is the switch B uh, which is in the normally closed position okay? and, uh, 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 and uh, the inputs are uh, uh, going to be represented for this one uh, by the, this way and uh, for B this way and then only uh, you, uh, you will be getting the uh, 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 output. Okay? Uh, so, after uh, uh, NOR gate which is inverted R. Now, let us look at the uh, NAND gate which is inverted AND basically. Okay? So, uh, uh, so, inverted AND uh, uh, gate uh, basically uh, we can get um, uh, by say uh, these uh, 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 using uh, the two switches A and B which are normally closed okay? and uh, corresponding inputs are going to be uh, 1 and 2 over here. Okay? Uh, so, this is going to be there and uh, here we are going to have the uh, output. Okay? Uh, so, the truth table for the NAND gate is going to be uh, uh, same uh, 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 as we have seen uh, earlier in my lecture on the uh, digital logic. Uh, now, let us look at the XOR gate and uh, here basically uh, 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 what we uh, use it uh, to program in a PLC, uh, we use one input and uh, one input which is normally uh, switch uh, which is normally open and one one uh, which is normally closed. So, they are put in series basically and then in parallel uh, with both of these uh, as shown in the figure here, uh, we have uh, one input one which is uh, normally uh, closed and another one uh, which is normally open. Okay? Uh, so, uh, and then uh, these are connected with the output. Uh, now, let us see the latching and internal relays. Latch circuit handles situation where it is necessary to hold a coil energized even when the input which energized it ceases. It is a self maintaining circuit that is after being energized, it maintains that last state until other input is received. Uh, when input 1 is energized and closes, there is an output okay? and uh, however, when there uh, is an output, a set of contact associated with the output is energized and closes. Okay? Uh, these contacts are the input 1 contact. Okay? Uh, so, uh, uh, that is uh, there. These contacts are the input 1 contact. Thus, even if input 1 contacts open, the circuit will still maintain the output energized. 
the only way to release the output is by operating the normally closed contact input 2. Okay. So, this is uh, how uh, the last circuit uh, can be represented in the ladder diagram. We have the input 1, we have the input 2 and here is the output okay. and uh, uh, we have the same output being put over uh, here. Now, uh, let us look at the internal relays. The internal relay or auxiliary relay or marker behave like relays with their associated contacts, but in uh, a reality are not actual relays, but simulations by the software of the PLCs. Some have battery backup so that they can be used in circuit to ensure a safe shutdown of plant in the event of power failure. Internal relays are often used when there are programs with multiple input conditions. Uh, consider the situation where the excitation of an output depends on the two different input arrangements. Okay. Uh, the first rung shows one input arrangement being used to control the coil of the internal relay IR1. Okay. Uh, the second rung shows the other input arrangement controlling the coil of internal relay, uh, relay IR2. The contacts of the two relays are then put in an R situation to control the output. So, here you can see these IR1 and IR2 are put in parallel to uh, 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 control the um, uh, output okay so uh, that is there so uh, here uh, you can see that uh, I, uh, an output controlled by two input arrangements we may also have the starting of the multiple outputs another use of internal relays is for the starting of multiple outputs when the start contacts are closed the internal relay is activated and latches the uh, input okay, as shown over here and uh, it also uh, starts output 1 and makes it possible for the output 2 and 3 to be uh, activated. So, uh, that is how it is there. Now, let us look at timers. Timers behave like relays with coil which when energized result in the closure or opening of contact after some preset time. The timer is thus treated as an output for a rung with control being exercised over pairs of contact elsewhere. Okay. Uh, so, uh, 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 that is there. So, uh, we could have a, a input and timer and then uh, you can have the uh, output. So, time delays before input signal uh, reaches the output okay. uh, and here uh, we uh, could have some input for uh, 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 get the output for this and uh, uh, time delay before uh, uh, output could be achieved uh, by this way. Others consider a timer as a delay block in a rung which delays signal in the rung reaching the output. Okay. Uh, so, uh, this is how it could be. So, uh, uh, this could be uh, input and you have this much delay and this is your timer output. Okay. And uh, here uh, you have this in uh, 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 input and you have timer output. So, this much is the uh, delay. So, this is off delay time or uh, T off and this is the on delay time T on. Such a timer waits for a fixed delay period before turning on. For example, a period which can be set between say 0.1 and 999 second in steps of 0.1 second. Okay. Other time delay ranges and step uh, are possible. The timer 
can be used for sequencing uh, uh, for different uh, uh, activities. Okay. Uh, for example, when the input 1 is on, okay, the output out 1 is switched on. Okay. So, uh, this is there. The contact associated with this output and then start the timer. So, this output starts the timer. Okay, and the contact of the timer will close after the preset time delay. Okay, when this happens, output two is switched on. Okay, so from here, this timer you have the output two. Okay, so uh, this is how uh, uh, it could be uh, uh, done. Okay, so uh, this is how uh, uh, this uh, could be uh, done over here. Now, let us look at the counters. Counters are used when there is a need to count a specified number of contact operations. For example, when items pass along a conveyor into boxes and when the specified numbers of items has passed into a box, the next item is diverted into another box. So, these type of operation one require the counters. So, we may have the down counter and we may have the up counter. The down counter uh, uh, in the down counter the counter counts down from the present value to 0 that is events are subtracted from the set value and when 0 is reached the counter context change uh, state changes. Okay. Uh, in the up counter the counts up to the preset value. Okay. So, events are added until the number reaches the set value and when the set value is reached the counters contact state changes. So, uh, this is how uh, it is the input and output for a counter and various ways of representing the uh, same in the uh, program 1. So, you say you have input 1 and then you have uh, 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 here, then you uh, here say you have input 2 and you have the output uh, uh, 1. Okay. So, this is how uh, we uh, can, uh, it can be uh, represented over uh, here. Okay. Then the master control relay, a whole block of outputs can be simultaneously turned off or on by using the same internal relay contact in each output rung, so that switching it on or off affects every one of the rung. Okay. So, uh, that could be uh, uh, there. So, you can have the master control relay say M C 1 over uh, here okay, and that controlling uh, the others. Then uh, let us look at the jump. The jump enables program to be designed so that if a certain condition exists, then a section of the program is actually jumped. Okay, so uh, that is there. So you could have carry out a program A. Is the input one is on? Yes. Then you move on here, carry on the program C, and if it is not, then carry on the program. B. Okay, so uh, you uh, we could have uh, uh, it being represented like this: program A, program B, and then you can have the program C. Now let us look at the handling of data. Okay, so in data handling, uh, uh, we have the data movement, the, the data comparison, arithmetic operation, and the code conversion. So, uh, how the data movement uh, is uh, uh, there uh, in case of PLCs? So, for data movement, the instruction will contain the move data instruction that is the source address of the data and the destination address of the data. So, you have the move instruction, you have the source address and you have the destination address. Okay? So, such data transfer might be to move a constant into a data register, a time or counter value to a, a data register, data from a data register to timer or counter, data from a data register to an output or input data to a data register etcetera. Then uh, uh, for the data comparison, PLCs can generally make the data comparison 
of uh, say uh, less than usually denoted by uh, less than symbol or alias equal to uh, denoted by uh, equal sign or eqy uh, equ less than or equal to uh, this way greater than uh, greater than or equal to okay or not equal to okay so here basically you have the compare instruction you have the source address and you have the destination address such a comparison might be used when the signal from two sensors are to be compared by the plc before an action is taken okay for example an alarm might be required to be sounded if a sensor indicates a temperature above 80 degree and remain sounding until the temperature falls below 70 degree okay so uh, this is how uh, it could be uh, done okay so uh, you could have uh, 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 um, the temperature alarm uh, uh, plc programming could be like this okay so uh, for uh, k uh, is equal to say 80 uh, that is 80 degree centigrade uh, uh, you could have a alarm over here okay and this is for uh, uh, k is equal to uh, 70 uh, uh, degree centigrade then let us look at the arithmetic operations addition or subtraction might be used to alter the value of some sensor input value perhaps a correction or offset terms or alter the preset value of the timer or counter okay so you, we could have the aid instructions here or uh, again uh, add and add and or uh, the result so this is how uh, 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 we, we could have the uh, arithmetic operations then the code conversion okay all the internal operation in the cpu of a plc are carried out using binary numbers okay thus when the input uh, is a signal which is decimal conversion to bcd um, okay uh, is used likewise where a decimal output is required conversion to the decimal is required okay uh, so the data at the source address is in the bcd and converted to binary and placed at the destination uh, over here okay so the bcd to binary could be converted like this convert to binary instruction source address and you could have the destination address for further reading you can uh, refer uh, the mechatronics by bolton where you will find out the elaborate discussion on plcs thank you